Are you an astrophotographer with a telescope looking for some incredible deep sky targets to photograph in April 2023? Look no further. In this video I will show you 25 spectacular deep sky astrophotography targets you don't want to miss. If you don't have a telescope, no problem. I've got you covered with a video about 9 astounding astronomy events you can witness with the naked eye in April 2023. You can find a link to that video in the video description below. The long awaited spring has arrived. With the Milky Way low on the northern horizon at midnight, we are still in the wondrous galaxy season. From March till the end of May, the constellations that are high in the sky at midnight point away from our Milky Way galaxy, offering us a unique chance to explore far into the universe. April offers us astrophotography geeks the opportunity to observe and photograph galaxies and galaxy clusters that lie tens to hundreds of millions of light years away. It's always an incredible feeling when I realize that the light coming from these galaxies had to travel millions of years at the speed of light to finally reach our camera sensors inside our telescopes. We're essentially seeing these galaxies as they were millions of years ago. Who knows, perhaps there are aliens with telescopes out there looking at our Milky Way galaxy too. The beauty of the night sky never ceases to amaze me. So are you ready to explore the night sky? I'm here to help you through the best of the best. Plus if you watch the entire video, I'll share three of my most valuable tips that will help you to take stunning pictures of galaxies and I'll share with you some of my own pictures I took last year along the way. I've put 25 awesome deep sky objects in chronological order so you know when each of these objects will cross the meridian in the south at midnight. That's when these objects are at their highest point in the night sky. I'll mention the name of the objects, the constellations where you will be able to find them, as well as the apparent size in degrees and arc minutes. The pictures I'm showing you are mainly from the Aladdin Sky Atlas unless stated otherwise. I'm sure you can take even better pictures with your backyard telescope. Let's get started. On the 1st of April, the Coma Pinwheel Galaxy, also designated as M99 or NGC 4254, will be crossing the meridian at midnight in the constellation Virgo. This beautiful spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 5.5 by 5.5 arc minutes. On the 1st of April, the Silver Needle Galaxy, NGC 4244, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Canis Venatici. The beautiful spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 16.5 by 2 arc minutes. You probably think this is a joke, but it's not. The third object that will cross the meridian at midnight on the 1st of April is NGC 4258 in the constellation Canis Venatici. The spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 18.5 by 7 arc minutes. On April 2nd, the Swelling Spiral Galaxy, also designated as M61 or NGC 4303, will be crossing the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 6.5 by 6 arc minutes. On April 2nd, the Blow Dryer Galaxy, also designated as M100 or NGC 4321, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 7.5 by 6 arc minutes. Let me give you my first tip on how to photograph these incredible galaxies. When imaging galaxies, we're dealing with objects that emit light across the visible light spectrum, so it's best to photograph them under dark skies, during a new moon and away from city lights that can outshine or pollute the night sky. But if that's not possible, don't worry. You can use broadband light pollution filters like the Optolong L-Pro or IDES LPS filters to block out the major sources of light pollution. Just be aware that these filters will also block out some of the light emitted by the galaxies. Now let's keep going. On April 3, one of my favorite galaxy clusters known as Mercarian's Chain which includes galaxies like M84 and M86, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Virgo. The whole galaxy cluster has an apparent size of about 3 degrees or 180 arc minutes and is best photographed with a modest focal length telescope of about 300 to 500 millimeters. This is my picture from last year taken with my telescope service 8480 Photoline Refractor Telescope and my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera using LRGB filters. The total integration time was about 4 hours. On April 4, M88 or NGC 4501 will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This wonderful spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 7 by 4 arc minutes. On April 5, 
M58, also called NGC 4579, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Virgo. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 6x5 arc minutes. On April 5, M91, also designated as NGC 4548, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 6x4 arc minutes. On April 5, the Needle Galaxy, also called NGC 4565, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This edge-on spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 16 by 2 arc minutes. I took this picture with my Edge HD 8-inch backyard telescope with a 0.7 reducer and my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera. I was experimenting with 5 minute intervals last year and the total integration time using LRGB broadband filters was about 10 hours. On April 5, the Koi Fish Galaxy, also called NGC 4559, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This galaxy has an apparent size of 11 by 4.5 arc minutes. On April 6, the Sombrero Galaxy, also called M104 or NGC 4594, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Virgo. This beautiful spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 8.5 by 4 arc minutes. Let me give you my second tip on photographing galaxies. Use an additional H-alpha narrowband filter to capture the hydrogen-rich nebulas in other galaxies. Combining your H-alpha with regular color data will make the galaxies stand out and show the hydrogen-rich nebulas within them. That's a great way to make your galaxies look amazing. Now let's get back to the overview. On April 7, the Whale Galaxy, also called NGC 4631, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Canis Venatici. The beautiful spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 15 by 3 arc minutes. On April 9, NGC 4725 will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 11 by 7 and a half arc minutes. On April 9, the Crocsi galaxy, also called M94 or NGC 4736, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Canis Venatici. This beautiful spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 14 and a half by 12 arc minutes. On April 10, the Coma Cluster, also designated as Abel 1656, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This beautiful galaxy cluster has an apparent size of about 3.5 degrees or 210 arc minutes and can be best captured with a modest focal length telescope of about 500 millimeters. On April 14, NGC 5005 will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Canis Venatici. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 6x3 arc minutes. My third tip is about the kind of gear needed to photograph these awesome galaxies. In general, I recommend a long focal length telescope of at least 1000 mm or more to take detailed photos of individual galaxies. As mentioned in the overview, most galaxies are about 5 to 20 arc minutes in apparent size. If we compare that to the size of the Moon, which is about 30 arc minutes, galaxies are about 3 to 6 times smaller. Of course, there are some exceptions. Galaxy clusters like Mercurian's chain show multiple galaxies in a larger field of view and are best captured with telescopes that have a modest focal length of about 500 mm. If you're going to use a long focal length telescope, you'll also need a good quality equatorial mount that can track these galaxies in the night sky with a sub arc second accuracy. Let's continue with the final part of this overview and let me give you one extra bonus tip at the end. On April 14th, the Waterbog Galaxy, also known as NGC 5033, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Canis Venatici. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 11 by 5 arc minutes. On April 15, M53, also designated as NGC 5024, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Coma Berenices. This is not a galaxy, but a wonderful globular cluster with an apparent size of 13 by 10 arc minutes. On April 15, the Sunflower Galaxy, also called M63 or NGC 5055, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Canis Venatici. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 12.5 by 7 arc minutes. On April 19, one of the most popular galaxies known as the Whirlpool Galaxy, also designated as M51 or NGC 5192, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Canis Venatici. This wonderful interacting spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 11 by 7 arc minutes. 
This is my picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy taken last year with my Edge HD 8 inch telescope and my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera. I used CWO RGB broadband and an HA narrowband filter to image this wonderful galaxy. My total integration time was about 5 hours. On April 21, NGC 5248 will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Boötis. This spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 6 by 4 and a half arc minutes. On April 22, M3 or NGC 5272 will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Canis Venatici. This is not a galaxy but a beautiful globular cluster with an apparent size of 18 arc minutes. On April 25, NGC 5364 will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Virgo. This galaxy has an apparent size of 7 by 4 and a half arc minutes. On April 27, another favorite of mine known as the Pinwheel Galaxy, also designated as M101 or NGC 5457, will cross the meridian at midnight in the constellation Urza Major. This wonderful spiral galaxy has an apparent size of 29 by 27 arc minutes. This is a picture I took last year of the Pinwheel Galaxy with my Edge HD 8 inch and ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera using HA and LRGB filters. My total integration time was about 5 hours. My bonus tip is about exposure time. Galaxies are generally quite bright, especially the core of these galaxies, so you don't need very long exposure times to photograph galaxies. Often, one or two minutes is already enough to photograph a galaxy and a bright core might take even less than a minute to capture its details. You can find more tips about astrophotography and astrophotography gear on my website astroformspace.com and if you have any questions about this topic don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below or email me at astroformlive at gmail.com If you enjoyed this video and you want to show support for my free content please like, share and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out other ways to support me in the video description below and you can find my content on my website astroformspace.com. Thanks for watching and here's to clear skies!